What's going on guys? Welcome to a new episode of Wiz Land with Wiz. Happy to be with you guys today. Uh, so you read the title of the video. Uh, you went ahead and clicked it. Uh, welcome to Wiz Land, which is a uh, channel where I try, well I don't try, uh, where I share content about getting better, becoming the best version of yourself, and reaching whatever potential you feel uh, you have. Uh, life is about growth, um, and I'm in that own personal uh, journey of trying to reach the best version of myself, not only in financial gain, but also in personal gain, also in becoming a better version of myself in all areas of life, within health, within uh, fitness, wealth, uh, within finances, and also within relationships. So it is a process. And within that process, uh, I decided to share uh, the journey. So uh, welcome to today's video. And today we're going to be talking about why not all dreams are meant to be fulfilled um, because it's very important uh, for us to have dreams um, and from them to also um, to, to, to be in a way delusional uh, when you're young because that is the beauty of being young, being naive to certain things and, be, uh, and having that aspect of being innocent. I think that's one of the main beauties that we as kids have and through life we start noticing and realizing how things really work. Uh, and for whatever reason, we lose that um, that that aspect of dreaming, sorry, that aspect of dreaming about uh, things in life and trying to attain certain goals or certain things that maybe when we were younger um, we had that illusion of doing and and, and that um, that that faith of getting to and fulfilling when we got older. Um, but I don't I don't understand why um, when we're older <laughs> we kind of lose that and, and that's where I want to go with this. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I wanted to be a football player. Uh, so for people in the United States, uh, that's a professional soccer player. For people um, all over the world, internationally, um, football, a footballer. Uh, I will always um, see myself in the stadium being cheered on. Um, I even would have dreams about this, where I would just take like five players and score the winning goal and... Um, the entire crowd cheering my name and things of that nature. Um, and that's something that I actually had when I was younger. Um, and I'm talking about starting from the age of uh, nine years old um, all the way to my maybe early 20s. I always wanted to to become a pro athlete, um, not because, um, and this is, this is the thing where I wanna go with this, because I wanted to become a pro athlete, um, not because, of the love of the game, but because of the fame that it brought, that it brought within the game, uh, the fame, the money, uh, the in my in my head, the the aspect of freedom in a sense. Uh, but uh, to be honest with you guys, um, I'm very grateful that I was not able to attain this goal because all this dream, um, because it taught me a lot of things about life. The reality is uh, that whatever dream we have, uh, we're going to have to work for it. If you want something, uh, you have to really work for it. And it's not just about work either. You have to, the timing has to be right. Uh, you have to prepare yourself for it, not only physically, but mentally. Uh, you have to ha be in the right mindset to be able to welcome this new um, perceived uh, goal that you have um, about whatever it is that you really want. The thing is that um, when I was young, when I, and I'm still young, but when I was younger, I had this illusion that when I would become a pro athlete, I would become free. I would be able to just play uh, football, soccer, and that would be my main life. Um, but the reality is that I've never really enjoyed um, being under someone's rules. Like I never really liked, I mean, currently I work at eight to five, um, but it's I'm using my eight to five to kind of build my, my next step. Um, in my eight of five to use it as as leverage for me to have a stepping stone and build and set me up for the for the future. I'm not just going about my day uh, working for the, for this eight of five just to work without a plan for what's next. But the thing is that becoming an athlete is a beautiful thing. Um, there's only a small amount of people that end up making these pro teams. 
Um, but it takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of connections. It takes a lot of things to go right for you to attain this level of, 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 um, of gaming, uh, this level of being the best in the world at soccer or football, or just in general, an athlete. The thing is that when you think about it in that way, yeah, I could have become a pro athlete. Um, I definitely could have become an MLS player. Like I, I truly believe that if I had my mindset in the right place. Uh, I believe that talent alone was gonna be able to get me to that next level without understanding that um, if I didn't live it, if I didn't breathe it, if I wasn't about it 24 seven, I was not going to be able to even get a chance to uh, be able to put myself out there. And that's the reality of the world. If you're not able to live whatever it is that you're trying to become, and I'm saying consuming it, allowing it, allow that to become an obsession for a face in your life that you're trying to attain it, uh, more than likely you will never attain it. And that's what not being able to attain those goals and attain that goal of becoming a pro athlete taught me. Yeah, I had talent. Uh, yeah, I had the physical um, the physical attributes for it. Um, for, for my height, um, being 5'11", that's like the perfect height for a soccer player, to be honest. And that's still considered a little bit tall on the tall end of the spectrum. Um, yeah, to be honest, being a striker, that's a pretty good uh, height. Um, I was 160, 180 um, when I was like at, at my prime uh, level of soccer. Uh, I was pretty fast. I was always the fastest player in the, in, in the pitch. Um, I had touch. I had um, all these different traits that you don't really teach, that you kind of have already. I had them. The reason is that I never really tried to work on them. I really didn't put that extra effort. I didn't really put that extra um, work outside of the pitch. So I always, um, like I would eat like shit, to be honest. I would never drink enough water. And even with that being my diet and being my plan, I was able to literally play really good into the age of 23. So from the age of 16, so the age of 15 to 23, so that's a span of eight years, I was able to really be good uh, at, at my craft without even putting the extra effort to becoming good. But that's just a shade of the possibilities that I could have I, I could have really attained if I was dedicated to like Ronaldo was. Ronaldo, uh, for whatever, if you don't know who Ronaldo is, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, he's one of my um, top players of all time. He's uh, number two, number three for me. It's between number two or number three. Um, but my number one is Ronaldo, the R9 uh, from Brazil. But he's not my, my number one player of all time. But number two would be the Cristiano Ronaldo. Number three would be Ronaldinho. So those three players, for me, uh, were kind of the... The, the 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 top the top of what I wanted to uh, to achieve um on the pitch so I, I would like there like I would do the same tricks the step overs the, the the Cristiano chop all those different things um I would try to do the elastico like Ronaldinho so I learned how to do that um I learned how to do all these different things but and sometimes I would do them in the pitch. Uh, sometimes I, it would, they wouldn't come out. But the thing is that they always kept me uh, trying to become better in the pitch. Uh, and what I kind of didn't like uh, to study was what these athletes did outside the pitch um, when they were at their prime. Um, if you know uh, Ronaldo, uh, the El Fenomeno from Brazil, that guy um, got injured. Uh, he could have been the best, in my opinion, of all time if he wouldn't, if it wasn't for the injuries. Um, he had two major injuries that he was able to come back from, and still with that, he was able to uh, win Ballon de Oro. Uh, he was able to come back to a really good, um, good, uh, good stage of his career where he was able to still perform and be very productive. Um, and but still, you could tell that some of those injuries really affect him. And, and the thing is that it also, he had all the issues with his weight and all these different things. So the thing is, he had a lot of things he had to fight. And, and, and even though he was able to fight them back and get back to that stage where he was able to perform at a pro level, it took a lot from him. It took a lot of him to do that. 
something that I never really cared for, never really care about because for me, it was all about what happened on the pitch. The point that I'm putting out there is it has to do something with just being able to dream and being able to fail, trying to reach your first dream um, and, and learning why you didn't reach your dream. The thing is that when we're young, we have a dream. Um, we And that's what some people used to ask us. I mean, I think that now in our culture, there's one thing that we don't really do as much where we ask like children, what do you want to be in this world? And we allow them to dream and allow them to choose whatever it is that they think of. Uh, for me, I've always, when I um, been able to talk to younger kids, I always want to know what they want to be because it gives me kind of a a reality of what our new culture is going to look like in maybe 10, 20 years. And, and it's true. A lot of kids want to be YouTubers. So it kind of makes me think about where we're going to be in 20 years. Is everyone going to try to be a content creator? Is everyone going to try to do something within YouTube? Um, and, and I don't see nothing bad with that unless we do have a very strong decline of the main things like doctors, like um, like the social workers that help our society to actually continue on living and things of that nature. If we see a very big decline of that, um, I think we're going to be in trouble, uh, to be honest, because we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need people that actually are in these professions, engineers, because the engineers are definitely the ones that are always pushing the needle to that next level. Uh, not everyone can be a content creator. Uh, I think it will be very interesting to see if these engineers actually turn into content creators and actually share the process of becoming an engineer, which I think is very interesting because it shows the ne next generation that you can actually do both. You can become a content creator and also choose a, a more conventional career uh, that will give you six uh, more than likely six um, figure uh, pay, a six figure pay. And it's a longer process, but you can still like share your journey within that particular career. Because I don't, I'm not in that camp where I believe that trying to become a doctor is wrong or, or trying to work for someone is wrong. I really don't believe that because I too, I too, I do believe that while everyone deserves freedom, that everyone deserves to be an entrepreneur or has the skills to become an entrepreneur. Like that's not for everyone. And we live in a generation that believes that everyone can become an entrepreneur. Uh, that's a lot of things, me trying to do different things. And I'm not saying I'm a serial entrepreneur, none of that bullshit. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my own stuff with art, you know? So I'm trying to become an artist slash uh, a business person. And I'm seeing that the business person is more difficult because I have to market. I have to figure out how I'm gonna make a uh, sell. So I have to learn how to sell and all these different things. There's so many things into, into becoming an entrepreneur that everyone just focuses on the aspect of making money. Um, but regardless to say, man, like when you have dreams, it's okay to dream very big as dream as dream as big as possible because that's your dream. And I also believe that when you have dreams, they come from a, a higher power. And I'm not going to go into a religious um, aspect of this because I, I believe I'm, I believe in God, but I don't. I do never. Don't ever try to tell, tell my aspect of what, what I believe about God. My relationship with God is my relationship with God, and I truly believe that's for every person to kind of have their own experience with that and have their own journey with that. Um, I truly don't don't advocate or agree when people try to force other people into religion and religion. I. I I see religion as something that is there for anyone that wants to accept it in their lives. And if you don't really accept it, that's on you. Um, but I'm not going to judge you just because you decided not to accept it. It's on you, it's your call, it's, it's your own relationship with it. And that's what it is, you know? So, but the thing is that I believe that certain thoughts come to us from a higher power. Um, for myself, I was raised um, by a single mother household um, and we were very poor. Uh, I didn't see no type of wealth around me. I didn't see nothing. I mean, I used to play uh, football slash soccer in, in sand, um, in concrete. And, um, and that was just the way that we play, man. Like it was fun as hell. Um, our goals were, had no net sometimes, but we just play. It was just a goal that was there in the park and we would just always play. We'll find a way to play. Um, now that's called the hood, man. Like, 
<laughs> if you're from the from Europe or you're from that will be come the slums or whatever the case is. Um, El Barrio, if you're from uh, El Barrio, if you're from Mexico and all of them, like it, this is this was the ghetto in the United States, um, and it was solely Latino, solely uh, African American people, solely international people and things of that nature, people that that were migrating to the United States that were just trying to figure out how to get. Um, into their feet and, and have have their life continue. Um, and, and honestly, guys, I never like knew, like I say, I never saw any type of wealth around me. Uh, there was no one with a flashy car. There was there was none of those things when I was growing up. But I always have this thought in, in my head that I will always become a millionaire and I will always take care of my family. And I will always have people that actually would um, kind of look up to me in a way and, and, and try to help me and me, and me also help them um, by giving them a service, or giving them something. Um, and in that case, in that particular time frame in my life, it was me becoming an athlete, um, giving them entertainment by me being the best player that I could be. And, and to be honest with you guys, now that I'm older, um, that's what actually has made me become who I'm becoming. It's made me understand that if I want something, I really have to want it. And I have to understand that it's not only about dreaming, but it's also about working towards whatever that dream might equal equate to you. And when you're able to kind of connect both things, the dream aspect of it and the work aspect of it, and you connect those and mix them and make them one, um, I, I think and I believe that that's what, what is needed in order for you to attain a goal. And sometimes it's not even about being a goal. You have to be able to generate a system around that, that it will give you the results that you're looking for. So it's more about the system that you have around you that will help you attain this uh, particular thing that you want to attain. So if you have a dream and you still have not attained your dream, it's time for you to really understand why you didn't do it. For me, it was soccer. For me, it was not becoming a pro athlete. For me, it was understanding that um, if I really wanted to continue on this journey of trying to become a soccer player, I ha at that point where I thought about that, it's a, like, where I thought about it was, in the way that I thought about it was like, why have, have I not become a soccer player yet? Or a pro athlete. Um, and for me, it was becoming a pro athlete is when you're getting paid to play the sport um, full time that you have enough money for you to support yourself. Um, and, and this is the thing, when I was younger, when I was 17, I was getting paid to play for a team. I was getting paid um, $100 a game, and then I was getting paid uh, 25 extra dollars for a goal, for any goal that I would score. That's not legal. I don't recommend for you to get that because if you're trying to play college ball um, and they find out about that, you, you're not gonna be eligible. But whatever the case is, I was getting paid on the down low for that. Uh, and, and the thing is that when I would like play the games and I would score like a hat trick, I was like, damn, like I had just made 200 bucks basically. And, and it's just like, I was so happy about that. And I was excited about that. And I was like, damn, this is going to be my next step. Like I'm going to be able to, to, to go to the next level, play college ball. And then from there, I'm going to go to the MLS. The reality is that there's so many things to to those to that equation that were off. Like, I didn't have the grades for it, so how am I going to go into a college that will take me seriously as a student athlete? And that's one of the things that, when it comes to it, is like when you have dreams, it's good to dream. But if you only have a dream and you don't have the understanding of what it will take for you to attain the dream, then you're actually just being delusional. And it's good to be delusional. Don't get me wrong. It's good to be delusional because sometimes delusion will get you to a point where you're close to your goal um, because you're going to believe that you're going to continue to, you can you can achieve this just by doing what you're doing. Um, and sometimes you might get close to it, but you more than likely will not attain it um, just because you ha you don't understand how the machine works. You don't understand that. Um, and just me in the con context of what I'm talking about, for example, me becoming an athlete, it doesn't only take my talent. It takes money to go to a school. So if you're a good student, if you have good grades, then you might be able to get a scholarship for the school. Then you can actually tell the, your coach, hey, like, 
I'm a good student. Here's my videos. And that's another thing. I had no type of videos that I could show these coaches to, so they can actually take me serious as a player on the field. And and when you have no type of, no type of, let's say, documentation of who you are and you're coming out of nowhere, people are going to be very skeptical about who you are, what you do, and, and the things that you're saying that you do. And that's why I, I, for one, am documenting my things now because I learned that from 10 years ago that, yeah, the fact that I didn't, didn't ever, like I only have maybe one game, maybe one game, if that, recorded. And, and that's pretty sad for me because I wish I had my, my career when I was playing and I wish I had like different clips. I, I wish I, I would have made it real, but nobody, I didn't think, I didn't believe that was important at that time because I felt that my skills alone were going to be able to get me into a school where I was going to be able to play D1. And, and that's very delusional. And, and, and that's why now as a soccer player, like, I'm sorry, now as a soccer coach, I pretty, I'm pretty adamant about at least getting my players their, their footage um, and I record their games um, because I know not every parent can do that. So I do that for the entire team. Um, I actually have uh, a videographer, uh, which is my brother. He goes out there. I get, I pay him. He records the game, and hey, and there's footage for you. You know, there's footage for my player, of my player. So that's something that I wish I would have had when I was that age, but I don't. So I'm I'm making sure that at least I'm doing that for the people that I can do that for, and and actually, what I've learned from that is that you have to know how the game works. And, and once you learn how the game works, you'll be able to attain, or at least you'll be better prepared for you to actually attain and go for whatever dream you're trying to reach for. Uh, so yeah, guys, I mean, I know this podcast, I know this video uh, was all over the place, but because I'm th I have so many things in my mind about that I'm thinking about right now, um, and there's no script about this. this. All this shit is acapella. All this shit comes out the, uh, come out, come out the brain. As it comes out, come out the dome. Um, it's like basically I'm freestyling it in a sense, but it's things that I've gone gone through. It's things that I'm thinking about, and and also if you have dreams, man, like it's good to have dreams. Like I would say, if you have kids, man, allow them to dream. Tell them that they can become whatever they want to be, uh, but also teach them that they have to. Gonna, they're gonna have to work for whatever it is that they're trying to get to. Because if you just tell them dream, you can do, you can choose whatever you want to. Um, and then they choose to be a ball player or they choose to be an athlete and, then, and you don't see them even trying. It's, it's not a real, it's not a real way to, to kind of support someone um, and tell them, and you're still telling them, oh, you can, you'll, you'll be, a, uh, uh, you'll be able to attain that dream and they're not doing nothing. And it's not, it's not realistic, you know? So I'm, I'm a bit advocate about, um, I'm a big believer, I'm sorry, about allowing people to dream. Don't don't shit on somebody's dream. Allow them to dream, but also tell them, okay, you want to do that. Well, let me show you the people that have done that. Let, let me show you what they've done at your age. Because a lot of a lot of kids, the thing is the reason I, I mentioned Cristiano Ronaldo um is the guy. I believe at 12 years old, um, he was moved from his city to another city and he got committed to, and he was practicing every fucking day. He was practicing every fucking day. He would cry with his um, with his mom on the phone and he would be crying that he didn't want to be there, but he was keep he kept through those struggles. He fought through the struggles. And those are the struggles that a lot of people don't think about. Those are sacrifices that he decided to make at a young age. He decided not to be able to entertain himself with females either. You know, that's a big thing here in the United States that um, a lot of Latinos, a lot of African-American kids, a lot of young kids, um, and I just don't want to see minorities, but a lot of kids in general are growing up through with social media and they have this access to all these different, um, and I want to say the same thing about guys and girls. We have um, these young kids, this new generation has access to a million people on their phone and they're getting 
they're they're trying to 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 do what these people are doing and they have all these different type of girls and guys they're looking up for looking at every single day and, and they're getting distracted by all this by the opposite sex when they're not even shouldn't even be thinking about those things about sex at 12 or all these different things you know so that is a big issue with our generation going forward um that hopefully it doesn't get worse but unless something really drastic happens i think it is going to get worse and and, and it sucks you know um so that's why i said like allow people to dream learn from your failed dreams but don't allow your failed dreams to stop you from dreaming right now my main dream for the rest of my life and this is a dream that i've also changed is um creating some uh, creating a, a a film production company creating a excuse me, creating a movie company here in Houston, Texas, uh, something that, a big one, a known one, something that I can really uh, create here, down here, and, and bring that entertainment and industry to Houston, Texas. And that's my goal. That's my goal. That's my lifetime goal that I want to do. And I want to create something like how Walt Disney did, you know, like, I want to be able to create an amusement park here in Houston um, here in the South and, and make it something that is going to stay here for longer than I live, you know? So that's one of my, that's my main goal. Um, I know it's going to be a lot of things that have to happen for that to occur, but I know the reality of that goal and I know what it will take to get there because I'm consuming stuff and I'm learning and applying things from different people that have been able to attain things like that, you know? So yeah, guys, I hope you have an amazing day. Um, I'm sorry if I kept you for almost 30 minutes. Uh, but if you did watch the entire video, I really appreciate you. Uh, because I, I truly believe that when we decide that we want to change, when we decide um, to do things in a positive manner, it doesn't matter where you're starting from. Um, all that matters is your intentions. And um, my main message to you today is to allow your dreams, your failed dreams, to help you um be the fuel for your next dream and at that that second dream i hope that you actually attain it from the learn experiences don't keep dreaming without really understanding why your dreams fell because i think that when when you do that that's you're losing you're losing time you're, lo you're losing the whole point of having dreams and being and actually failing at them um, don't get used to just losing either, um, because I think that's another excuse that people use, uh, that, oh, this didn't, be, this, I wasn't able to achieve this. So things like this would never happen to me. Once you believe that, 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 um, that storyline, uh, it's going to be very hard to kind of go away from that. You know, you're always going to be believing that and that's not a good way to live either. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you guys have an amazing day. See you in the next one. Take care. Peace.